There's a wide variety of LPS, or large polyp stony corals, available to marine aquarium hobbyists. They come in all shapes and sizes and colors, uh, many with beautiful fluorescent colors. You have such things as hammer coral, frog spawn coral, torch coral, echinophilias, chalices. I could go on and on, <laughs> so many of them. What I can say is that many LPS corals make great beginner's corals. Now on our website we do note the care level if it's very hard to keep or easy or beginner's coral. So each coral has its stats and easy to look up and find out information on them. Now LPS don't require nearly as strong lighting as SPS corals such as Acropora. A par level of anywhere from 80 to about 250, that range is good for LPS corals. Uh, they can do well under T5 lighting, metal halides, or LEDs. Um, you just want to keep lower lighting than you would for some of your SPS type corals. Now, in terms of flow, many of them require either low flow or moderate flow, not super high currents because as they are large polyp, their tissue can sway in, it in such strong currents they won't open fully. With any corals, stable water chemistry is very important. For LPS corals, you want to keep your calcium levels about 420 to 440 parts per million, your magnesium about 1260 to 1350 parts per million, and your alkalinity usually between 8 and about 9.5. Now if you are doing carbon dosing, such as bio pellets, you want to keep the alkalinity lower, ideally between 7 and 8. Now in terms of phosphate, you want to keep your phosphate below 0 0.10 parts per million. If it gets above that, you want to definitely switch out the media for a new batch to keep that low. And that helps with the corals opening fully and uh, coloring properly. Now also you got to pay attention to your nitrates. They're more tolerable to nitrates than SPS corals, but you still want to keep your nitrates below 10 parts per million when you're keeping LPS corals. Now in terms of feeding, LPS corals do gain most of their energy from light through photosynthesis, but it is important to feed them, and especially if you want to see them growing faster, uh, you can feed them a wide variety of different foods, depending on the size of the polyp. Now, things like scalemias, uh, wellsophilias, acans, you can feed things like mysis shrimp, sometimes even a small piece of silver side. Hammer corals can take uh, silver sides or mysis shrimp, uh, depending on the size of the polyp. But definitely bigger pieces of meaty foods and then combine with some plankton type feeds such as oyster feasts or rota feasts. Uh, even phytoplankton can be beneficial for LPS as well. So definitely offer them a variety of food and I'd recommend feeding maybe two to three days a week. Don't overdo it, you don't want to spike your phosphate levels, but definitely feeding will help them stay happier, open fuller, and uh, color up better for you. One thing to consider when keeping LPS corals if you're having trouble is to make sure that you don't have a fish in a tank picking on them. Sometimes even reef safe fish can be caught uh, picking on and bothering, even killing LPS corals. We've had plenty of rogue tangs in here over the years, blue tangs, purple tangs, even blennies that uh, have gone after chalices and other types of LPS corals. So definitely if you see a coral not doing well, you got to consider the flow. Is it getting the right flow, the right lighting? Is your chemistry in line, your nitrates in line, and then also is the fish picking at it? Something to consider. But overall, they're very easy to keep.